Welcome to Bible 180 Zechariah. Return to me, Yahweh calls, because the returning Jews of Jerusalem had not returned to true faith. Zechariah encourages them to rebuild the temple. Chapters 2 through 8 are visions. A messenger of Yahweh on a red horse is central and will interpret the visions for Zechariah. Four horsemen traverse the world and find it complacent despite rampant wickedness. Yahweh will remedy this. A woman representing wickedness is put into a basket and carried off to Babylon by angels. A giant scroll flying through the air curses criminals and banishes them from the city, which means order will be restored. Although Jerusalem is unimpressive and imperiled, an angel arc architect measures it and declares that it will be so big no walls could possibly contain it. Rejoice, says Yahweh, because I will come to live among you again. The most important visions are the middle ones. Satan prosecutes God's people. The high priest Joshua is the defendant, but his filthy clothes, Israel's sin, makes him unpresentable in the Lord's court. So the Lord provides him fresh priestly garments. The Red Rider announces Joshua is a symbol of Yahweh's servant, the branch. And this is a sign that Yahweh will remove the sin of the land in a single day. Next, a vision of two olive trees with hoses feeding olive oil into a golden lampstand with seven candles. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, that Zerubbabel and Joshua, the olive trees, will rebuild my temple. Lastly, a golden crown is placed upon Joshua's head. If Joshua is faithful, both priesthood and Davidic kingship will be restored to God's people. The last six chapters shift a little bit. The shepherd of Israel, the Lord, breaks two staffs called union and favor, clearly demonstrating that Israel's problems are a result of her sins. Yahweh had been a faithful and compassionate shepherd for centuries, yet when he asked for his due, he receives 30 pieces of silver, which he throws out because it's so insulting. Zechariah proclaims, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Rejecting Yahweh's rule will lead to chaos. Those who reject the Lord's rule and grace will receive cruel and manipulative shepherds in his absence. However, these cruel shepherds will be punished. One of Jude, out of Judah will come a cornerstone who will overthrow evil and restore the land. God's city will once again be a happy, happening, and prosperous place. There will arise a shepherd king like David. He will enter Jerusalem humbly on a donkey to usher in peace and justice. God's people will mourn the one they have pierced. They will experience true contrition for the God shepherd whom they had stabbed in the back. When the Lord returns, he will cleanse the land from sin and impurity in a flash, in a single day. The nations who initially reject Yahweh's rule attack Jerusalem, but Yahweh will stand on the Mount of Olives, march into Jerusalem, and redeem his people. The earth will be shaken. It will be a day of darkness in place of the sun, and yet a river of living water will flow from Jerusalem to bring life to those in every direction. It will turn out to be a day of terror and defeat for God's enemies, but a day of joy for those who call upon the name of the Lord. Yahweh will end up as the acknowledged king, not just of Judah, but as king over all the earth. The nations will repent and acknowledge his glory and worship him.